Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch and this is a Star Citizen edition of Zorch Reacts. I am behind on doing these. I've been a little under the weather and I've been working on some videos for Gamers Bay recently. And I've also still been working on a project for the channel. Trying to get um, a little more interesting stuff for the professor in the coming future. I'm going to have an episode of that coming soon. I know I've been promising that and it is definitely coming. But right now I am way behind on covering inside Star Citizen and what's been happening with the game. As recently I've learned a few things about Elite Dangerous, which is um, another space game that I used to play. Uh, I loved playing it in VR because VR is so immersive. And it looks like the game is dead. Uh, on Steam, their player counts are like seriously low. Community goals are not getting done. Community, um, community uh, events that are taking place in the game are not getting finished. And that's how, that, that means that there's not a lot of people playing. There's not a lot of people playing. And that's pretty bad for that game. On the flip side, on the Star Citizen side, oh, things have been jumping. Uh, there was Jump Town 2.0 that came back. Uh, that was immensely successful. And now, and now they've brought back Xenothreat and doing more testing of those dynamic events. And they've been really popular been drawing in a lot of people and while you know CIG has made some controversial moves lately with their uh, with their roadmap they did it because they don't want the distraction because they did it for the exact reason why a lot of people started complaining and screaming about in the comments is that they're they're taking what they say on the roadmap as a promise that they're definitely going to have this feature when they get to this point. And the thing is, game game development, even software development, I know software development because I work with software developers and my best friend happens to be a software developer and he has like 20, 25 years of experience in the field and tell you not everything goes right. Sometimes there are problems. Sometimes a feature that you put on a roadmap doesn't always get implemented at the time that the roadmap says it's going to be out. It happens. You got to deal with it. And there are people who just, just have no patience. So they altered the roadmap to reflect this, to get rid of the distractions. Anyway, uh, this latest video is covering AI, which has been a very, very important subject for Star Citizen lately, because the way the servers are overloaded, the way they've been overloaded, has been affecting the AI. Now, the AI, when you're on a fresh server, when you log onto a fresh server with not as many people on it and it has not as much stuff in memory, the AI is incredibly smart. And there have been people who said they've been on ground FPS missions, especially the uh, ones where you go into the underground bunkers and the enemy AI is scary smart. And then once the game, once the server starts, server memory starts filling up with stuff, the AI starts derping out. And you see AI standing on chairs, you see them 
uh, running into walls and doing all sorts of things because the server just can't keep up. Server meshing is supposed to solve that. But uh, the AI is a lot more sophisticated in this game than a lot of people realize. It's just that we can't see it because some of the tech that will allow the AI to function properly isn't in place yet. That might be what they're going to talk about here. The server meshing is one of the technologies they're really working hard on to get done, but they need server meshing. They need it because they're wanting to get Pyro out this year. It's not a guarantee that they will be able to do it, but that is their goal. Their goal is to get Pyro out this year. So let's take a look, see what they got going on. Oh, the character creator. The DNA system is already pretty sophisticated. It allows us to edit our characters' heads uh, in a very smart way, hmm. but the quality of the asset is not up to standard. I do like the way their character creator works. We are the editability so that we are more free to extend our uh, range of character heads. Okay, I've heard that they are working on improving that. What we tried to do, because we can't currently scan in more people, uh, and we did want to raise the amount of variation in the, the texture pool, is we tried to combine different textures together. A lot of the a lot of the people that they use, a lot of people that they scanned in for the character creator are actually members of the development team. Together, we would take the forehead wrinkles of one person and combine that with the mouth of another person to sort of create. Yeah, that's a in more the game right now. In the end. Right now, the good thing about about this uh, this new implementation is that we have a wider range of heads and a wider range of ethnicities that we can select. As we all know, we, we all know having more heads is a good thing. Set and the shading of the hey. previously created heads, they are much more believable. They are also sharper in details. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I like. Yeah, the the, the my textures they're quite bright. The, character faces that they've had so far seem a little plasticky these look a lot better beforehand you could really see like the striations in the irises and we kind of wanted to get a base hmm. set of textures that looked a bit more realistic the new eye it is uh, in including a new uh, eye wetness that is gonna create a, a better blending between uh, the eyeball and the head and the eyelids uh, nearby, yeah. but, uh, giving uh, the highlight uh, a more realistic reflection. The way that it reacts to light, it creates Not a way quite of on par with of the light over the Epic's metahuman, but definitely also, an improvement. Working on a first layer of variety for the eyebrows. The eyebrows uh, they are going to be uh, together with the eyelashes, um, a new layer of characterization for our heads. Altogether, it is a significant improvement, uh, and it all goes in a pool where every feature is actually swappable one from another, giving you the possibility to characterize your character even more in depth. Looking at the future, there's plenty of features that we will want to improve even more, and some even replace from what they are right now. So after 317, we will commit to inflate the amount of hairstyle that we have right now. <laughs> And so many other details like freckles, moles, uh, uh, scars, and even the makeup may be something that we will want to uh, adapt as a separate layer of uh, complexity so that you may cool. reach out uh, an even more complex uh, level of uh, characterization for your own avatar. The Star Citizen Character Creator is at the center of your ability to express yourself in the persisting universe. And these updates that are coming in Alpha 317 are just the next step in allowing everyone to one day create an avatar that is truly representative of the player underneath. And up next, we move from the human controlled to the AI operated. Yeah, I like their, I like their character creator. It's rather bare bones at the moment. Well, I wouldn't say not completely bare bones, but 
I like the improvements that they've got coming along. I like the improvements that they've got coming. With an update on planetary nav mesh, the technology that looks to unlock NPCs from their ah. static locations and allow them to travel surface side in much the same way you do. They used to do that. Uh, back before they rebooted Star Citizen, back, I think it was in 20... I think it was 2014 or 2015, they rebooted development of Star Citizen into this new direction of an MMO. Originally, it was going to be more of a single-player game with multiplayer elements to it, where the NPCs actually flew in and out of the starports. You could see their ships flying in and out just like in Elite Dangerous, like the NPCs do in Elite Dangerous. But um, they stopped that when they redid the game to create this vast open world game. They want to go back to that and to where the NPCs are traveling in and out of the, of the starport. They actually are going somewhere. They're actually going to a job. They actually have work that they do. They either are they mining, or they are you know pirates, or um their security bounty hunting whatever. The NPCs aren't just going in and out and just disappearing like they are in uh in Elite Dangerous, where they're just they're just there for show. The NPCs in Star Citizen will actually have a reason for being where they are. What we currently have in Star Citizen is a lot of really cool environment, but pretty much no AI. We want to make the world alive and reactive to the player. Mm -hmm. What we are building right now is the planetary navigation tech that is an extension of our current system. I heard recently that they actually had to make some bathrooms in ships larger because the AI needed slightly larger areas to move around in for their pathing. So they needed, they needed a bigger shitter. To be able to have AI finally on the planets. We planted the navigation mesh at this stage, we are at what we call phase zero, the engineering okay. phase. We are moving from a flat structure of the navigation mesh, where we assume that the environment is flat, and now we are converting the information that we have about our navigation mesh tile into a curved environment. Hmm. We have this uh, generation process of the tile. We have the, uh, the connection of the pile generated, connecting it with the other tiles existing in the planetary navigation mesh, and also improvements on the Pathfinder to be able to use all those tiles. So what the AI system does is it gets this information from physics, so it gets told when specific patch are built and created, and then we use this information from physics to actually generate a very detailed map mesh on the planet. Hmm. Well, then we try to well, I assume then the blue areas is where NPCs will travel. That's where they know they can go, where they can walk. I think that's how that works. Generated around the action that happens. So if the player lands in a location and AI are around, then of course we try to prioritize that part to give us the information that we require to actually make the gameplay happening. We are doing this dynamically because um, uh, the, our planets are too big and uh, at this moment we, there is no power and even memory enough to do this statically at the export time and to have all this information to read and to use it. Hmm. The result is basically that you are going to see NPCs walking on the terrain surface, being able to follow you because you hired them or because you uh, some of them entered in combat with you hmm. in the future of Star okay Season, hired well, npcs experiences in a live world yeah the, one of the things that they're also wanting to do is have npc ship crews where you can hire npcs to take roles on larger ships like say 
Carrick or um Carrick or the Caterpillar, whatever you could have like people you have NPCs doing maintenance or working the turrets. Of course they won't be as accurate as a player, but they'll be working the turrets. Uh, they were also working on the blade computers, like the ones that are in the Carrick, controlling turrets remotely. They're no substitute for an actual player, of course, but it would allow you to have at least some defense if you're just flying by yourself. Which those ships currently, <laughs> those ships currently are just a big flying bullseye if you don't have anyone else with you. Because you can't defend yourself. Where NPCs can actually roam across the planet more freely between structures and very natural environment. Okay. Where the environment is filled with fauna and animals that can actually move and, you know, use information of the environment, like feed out of the environment or, you know, drink water from a river. And this will really be a game changer because it will really make players experience an upward that is alive and not just an environment that they need to explore. Mm. So for when it's coming, this is still in discussion, but the door right now is open for mm. possibly 318, 319 release of the first missions that might use this technology. And, you know, I'm really looking okay. forward for people to play it. Not so what we learn this week? immediately, well, we learned that new but textures, um, eyebrows, in and the eye coming tech updates. are coming to the character creator in Alpha 317. That beyond this is a continuing effort to improve multicultural representation across subsequent patches. And that the work to enable NPCs that can give chase across the 360 degree surface of any planet or moon is well underway. Now, don't forget, there's a new free fly event starting today. Uh, oh. Jump Town and Nine Tails Dynamic Events will begin again at any moment. And oh, the they're doing program oh. has a new lodestone okay. variant of the popular Artemis armor that awards to both the referrer and referee. Referee. <laughs> referee? <laughs> I'm really good at shilling things. Now, the armor is a limited time addition to the referral program, so check out the robertspaceindustries.com website to learn more. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Cool. Okay. That's what the uh, code is that's up in my uh, corner of the window. That's my referral code. So if you use that, uh, you'll get some bonuses and stuff, and I'll get some... Uh, I'll get some rewards for you using that. A lot of, a lot of people who cover Star Citizen um, publish their referral code. So, if you're interested in trying the game, you know, use that, and it'll get you some extra bonuses and stuff, and and uh, help me get a new uh, another set of armor, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's just been. Uh, Zork Reacts, Star Citizen Edition. Uh, again, I'm sorry for this being late. And I'll try to get the other one out for the most latest edition of the video as soon as I can. Anyway, I've been Mike the Zorch. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Hit the bell icon so you get notifications of uh, new videos and any time I go streaming, which I do plan to start streaming again. And uh, also don't forget to check out the Gamers Bay community on MeWe, which is a social media platform that does not sell your data or run ads or, or nor do they have fact checkers, which is a good thing. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.